Welcome, empowered investors. I am still in beautiful Belgrade, Serbia. And it is a hot day here, but I must say it's not that hot. It's not any hotter than the summers I experienced as a kid. It's 86 degrees. You know, I walked around the block just a few minutes ago. It's not bad. It's We have a name for this. We call it summer. Yet, my phone is blowing up with heat, severe heat advisory alerts. What's behind all of that? Well, I think it's just an agenda, <laughs> but that's a whole nother topic. All right. What do we have going on in the real estate market? It might be summer outside, but let me tell you, the real estate market is kind of frozen and it's been rather frozen since the rate hikes a couple of years ago. But I will say in the past several months, it's even more frozen because we are seeing a situation here where a lot of buyers, just the typical owner-occupant buyers, not really you investors as much, everybody's kind of, you know, it's kind of like a Mexican standoff, as they say. Oh, gosh, I probably just offended someone. Sorry. So they're waiting for the Fed to cut the rates. and. The sellers are saying, hey, look, you know, we don't want to sell because why would we go from 2.75% to 6.5% on our mortgage? That's just crazy. We would get less house and pay more money. No one's doing that deal, right? We're seeing a very quiet real estate market in terms of sales volume, yet we're still seeing prices increase. And here, if you're watching on video, this chart is pretty interesting. It is the average monthly principal and interest payment on a 30-year fixed rate mortgage versus the median monthly household income. And as you can see, incomes have gone up, but also mortgage payments have gone up significantly in comparison to that income. There used to be this nice big margin where people were in a situation where they could get a lot of house for their money. And that's what people have been used to for a very long time, almost five years now. But now we're seeing a more normal type of situation where people are really, really struggling to buy this high-priced asset. And here's a question. You know, it begs the question, what is it about people that make them think things need to return to the way they used to be? Why is it that housing can't just be for many years to come? Of course, there will be adjustments and ups and downs in this along the way, but the overall mega trend may well be, and I think it is, that housing is just a really expensive asset. It would be like someone asking, why can't everybody just afford a Rolls Royce instead of a Toyota? I mean, what's the answer to that question? Things do not have to return to the way they used to be. Housing does not have to get a whole lot more affordable. Now, we're on the verge of maybe a Fed rate cut, right? You know, there's, there's a meeting literally today. Okay, and I can't wait to see what they say, because it is about time, Uncle Jerome Powell, that you give us a break and cut the rates a little bit. Just give us a quarter point. Everybody will be happy you did. But the problem is, look at the problem here. On this chart, it shows you that the inflation problem cannot be solved in terms of housing without massive amounts of new supply. That is really the only, only answer to the problem. So what does this mean? Well, it means that the rental market is underpriced and it means the rents are too damn low. Remember that character running for office <laughs> you know, years ago? The rent is too damn high. The rent is too damn high. The people are murder evidence can't afford to pay the rent cause rent is too damn high. The rent is too damn high. He had a point. But what makes you think the rent can't get too damn higher? I mean, you look around in foreign countries and people live in much smaller houses, flats. They accept a lot less for their money. They live in tiny little places. 
And that is normal around the world. It's only in the U.S. that we have these high, spoiled expectations, right? You know, I saw a funny thing on Facebook today, on Fakebook. And it was a woman who posted a thing saying she was talking to her uncle in Pakistan. And her uncle did not know what the word woke meant. And so she explained it to him. And his response was, these people in the West are just too darn spoiled. They've never had any real hardship in the last maybe two generations. And so they're just looking for something to do, (laughs) you know? And uh, I'd say that's a pretty accurate statement. And when you look at housing and you compare it to that, it's just the expectations. They've been formed over the last five decades in an era where we went off the gold standard, where the government could spend, spend, spend without any tether, where except for a few periods, we really had relatively low overall inflation compared to the rest of the world. And the expectations are in for a rude awakening. They're in for a big adjustment. Housing could remain just a high-priced, out-of-reach luxury for many, many years to come. I predicted during the pandemic that this would happen. One of the other things on a much smaller scale I predicted is that restaurants, the idea of going out to eat, that something, you know, people didn't really do that very much in the 50s, at least not in the fancy way we do it today. They didn't have these food delivery services. They didn't have all these luxuries. They didn't go to nice places and they certainly didn't go out often, right? Going out to dinner was a special occasion in the past, but it became this normal thing, right? And I predicted during the pandemic that going out to dinner would be a new like luxury thing. And in the US, that's certainly true. So there you go. Average monthly P&I payment on a 30-year fixed rate mortgage compared to median monthly household income. That gap has shrunk a lot and houses have become a lot less affordable, which means that the difference, the arbitrage between renting and owning, renting is now really a better deal. And that means rents are coming up. It just takes a while for it to adjust. The rents are always lagging the prices. And if interest rates go down, the houses will get a little more affordable, but then the demand will increase and that will put upward pressure on housing prices. So it's just a really messed up situation, frankly, the whole housing market. But it's a huge opportunity for us as investors at the same time. Now, Baselane, our sponsor, it is the number one banking platform built for real estate investors. It's banking, online rent collection, bookkeeping, tax reporting, analytics, and more. You can enjoy real-time cash flow analytics on your properties. You can get ready for tax season with automated bookkeeping and financial statements ready for your CPA. Join more than 40,000 real estate investors who trust Baselane to manage their rental property finances. Go to baselane.com slash Jason for a chance to win a $500 Amazon gift card. Let's look at delinquencies. When you consider hardship out there, right? When you consider the folks trying to predict a real estate crash, well, one of the things you have to look at, of course, is are people in trouble? Are they overburdened by their mortgage? Are they over leveraged? Are their payments on their existing mortgages just too darn high? Are they going to get into trouble? Are they going to go into default? Are they going to go into foreclosure? Well, (laughs) not likely. Now, remember, it's a completely different story for people who are already owning houses, existing owners versus new people entering the market. The two are diametrically opposed. They have a completely different worldview. Entering the market today, high payment, unaffordable, et cetera, et cetera. Entered the market a couple of years ago, super low payment, incredibly comfortable, incredibly affordable house. But we're also going to compare this single family homes versus multifamily apartment complexes. And you're going to see that those two 
asset classes are also diametrically opposed. And think about this. When you hear a report in the media that real estate is in trouble or real estate delinquencies have increased, you got to always ask yourself, what type of real estate are they talking about? Are they talking about single family? Are they talking about multifamily? Or are they talking about an even worse asset class, which is office space or any other asset class for that matter in the real estate world? Okay, so here is the serious delinquency rate for single family homes where they have loans from the two biggest mortgage players on planet Earth, Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae. And here you see that we have extremely, in fact, historically low serious delinquencies. In fact, almost nobody, like it's almost statistically insignificant, the number of people in trouble with their mortgages. Again, they are extremely, extremely comfortable. In fact, I was reading a report. If you want the specific numbers, these are the percentages. And you see on the chart, if you're watching, they are very, very low. But the actual number of people in serious delinquency situation, meaning they're more than 90 days late or they're in foreclosure on their properties for single family homes in the United States, you want to know the actual number? It's seven people. Yep, only seven. <laughs> I'm just kidding, obviously. <laughs> There's 140 million housing units in the United States, okay? A lot more than seven people are in trouble, but that's about what it really is. It's like nothing. It's a, you know, I love that saying, nothing burger, right? It's a nothing burger. There's just nothing going on in the foreclosure world in single family homes. Very different in multifamily. We'll look at that in just a moment. But look at this. This chart shows you the serious delinquency rate well below 1%. It's a nothing burger. Now, compare this to the COVID era, where it spiked well above 3%. Compare it to the Great Recession, the GFC, the global financial crisis, whatever you want to call it, right? Back in, in 2009, as we saw these foreclosures coming through the system starting earlier, obviously the economic hardship started before that. But here is where we saw the peak of the foreclosure activity. That was at almost 6% of the market. So literally, it was like 12x what it is now. Okay, it's just a non issue. Okay, what about multifamily? Well, that is completely different. That is really, really bad. In fact, it's the worst it has ever been since 2012. There are more multifamily properties in serious delinquency than there have been in the last really 13 years. I mean, just digest that for a moment. This market is in serious, serious trouble. That's going to take a few years to work itself through the system, but it will work itself through the system because there is still a housing shortage in the United States and multifamily will benefit from that housing shortage problem as they have inventory to provide. It's very overbuilt. A lot of syndicators that got themselves into serious trouble by doing seriously stupid things, but it is what it is. So we will continue looking at that. Now, I want to show you this and share with you this. You remember Gerald Salente, right? He's been on the show a few times over the years. You know, he's kind of an out there, little bit radical guy, right? I'll be the first to agree with that. But he wrote an email that I got the other day predicting uh, some things about the presidential erection. Okay. Yes, I have to say that because I will be monitored by the thought police. Yes, the thought police are always monitoring this show. And the maybe most evil company in the world, um, what should I call them? Gargoyle. <laughs> Gargoyle. Yeah. Gargoyle runs the biggest email system on the planet. You're probably using their email system. So, you know, they have a corporate version that companies pay for. And then they have the free personal version called Gargoyle Mail that, uh, you know, you get for free, right? And obviously, this company, Gargoyle, is scanning your emails and retargeting you and serving you advertising based on what's in your email. I mean, it's just it's totally disgusting, right? This is a an evil company. And now, 
what they're doing is they're literally deleting emails out of your inbox. Here's what they did to me. And if you might see it on the screen, I posted this on social media. But of course, they don't serve it up to anybody. Anytime I, I post something that's, you know, not in line with the narrative, you know, like a very small number of people see it versus I post what I had for lunch the other day. You know, I put a picture of my lunch and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people see it. I, I mean, it's just absurd. It's ridiculous. So Gargoyle sent me this notice saying that this was, and it says alert, phishing messages, message detected post delivery for G. Salente at trendsjournal.com. And this was this email about the presidential election, right? And by the way, you know, I'm using that word to mean another word. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so this phishing email, they said this was a phishing email. There was no phishing on this email. You know what phishing is, right? Where they're trying to obtain your address. There's nothing in this email that would by any means make it considered a phishing email. I know what phishing is. I know what a phishing email looks like. I am aware of these things. And they just deleted it. I skimmed this email when I saw it and it looked interesting. And so I, I saved it and uh, it's gone. I will never be able to read this email and I will never know completely what was in it. Unless I call up Gerald, which, you know, he's been on the show a few times, so I could ask him, hey, will you resend me that email? Well, Gargoyle will probably delete it again. I mean, if you don't believe the abuses going on, I, I mean, think about it. You cannot think about or evaluate what you never see. That's the situation we're in. It's Orwellian. So there you go. All right. Our next Wednesday meetings coming up, we're talking about tax savings and asset protection with a totally new guest. J.J. Childers is going to be on with us. That's Wednesday, August 14th. So register for that at jasonhartman.com slash Wednesday and be sure to register for our upcoming masterclass. We do these every month and we love to have you join us and it'll really help you become a more empowered investor. 